Changing a sine wave into a square wave is in general not very difficult. Say you uh, must drive a transistor, at least in this circuit, made with a classical BGT uh, uh, transistors, the BC547B here, and here also the BC547B, and also a BD139, uh, with, say, such an oscillator made in this way, you can change the um, sine wave into a square wave. And of course that also refers to other types of oscillators made with field effect transistors, etc, etc. But now at the moment I only want to demonstrate this circuit because uh, I made this circuit, showed it in the past. It's a um, uh, long wave radio oscillator with its with in its collector a coil that's here. And via that coil we can say change the frequency. Now it's not 99 kilohertz. This is the waveform by the way. And when I take the rod out you will surely see changes especially on the waveform here and also on the frequency that's completely logical by the way uh, could be that you think well here's another duty cycle okay that's true anyway uh, I will demonstrate more about it uh, push the rod in again here and now we go to the lowest frequency that it can give, approximately 95 kilo cycles. Anyway, uh, that circuit was in an earlier video on my YouTube channel. And now I have made this second circuit. And that second circuit uh, is a kind of sine wave to square wave converter. And here is the schematic. And of course you can say what has this BD139 to do in this circuit because its collector is not connected to the positive lead. Uh, that means that in general uh, it cannot amplify and that's completely true but uh, anyway that's the reason, also the reason, why I've made here two connections, two electrodes. One is going from the uh, collector of this transistor here via 0.22 microfarad cap. And here we have the other way out, uh, the, say, the transistor that changes the sine wave to the square wave sends its energy into the BD139 and here we also have an out. But say uh, it's all experimental what I'm doing and say when you omit this part of the circuit this BD139 you also have say a good circuit a properly working circuit though I want to demonstrate some things that happen when you use that extra BD139 uh, which is collector not connected con a collector not connected to the positive lead anyway let's first look at the uh, situation where we look here at the output of this transistor here. This transistor that is set via uh, this potentiometer, it, it's biased. It also sets the duty cycle, that's very important to tell, did this uh, potentiometer 47k sets the 
duty cycle. Let's see what happens when we turn that 47k potentiometer here. Turn it now a little bit. Let's see. So you can surely see that there's a moment where the whole circuit doesn't work. And here, say the duty cycle changes for a fierce part, and here it also doesn't work. So there is a critical position inside somewhere on the carbon layer of the potentiometer where that works. And there are other say positions where it doesn't work. Anyway, let me try it again. So well. You also see the frequency change. Uh, the, there is of course a relation between the uh, changing the duty cycle and the frequency, but in general it's no problem. So the duty cycle can be changed in the complete frequency range where this works, 60 kilo cycles up to 250 kilo cycles. Well, that's of course important, perhaps interesting, etc. etc. So here is that converter changing a sine wave to square waves. The schematic again, by the way. And this is the circuit that is earlier published on my YouTube channel. And I will surely give the link. Like I told earlier, this is the crux, the first transistor that has to do its job changing sine wave into kind of square waves. And by the way, of course, this is made for this frequency band. In other frequency bands, could surely be that this doesn't work. But anyway, the 555 chip, that's very common, as far as I know, works to a uh, as a square wave oscillator works to approximately 400 kilo cycles and well I think with this circuit you can get to higher um, uh, frequencies anyway. So let's look what happens when we connect the scope now to that PD139 with its non-connection to the positive lead. Well, it's here. Let me try it. All is experimental, by the way. And well, now it is connected here to the BD139 uh, at its collector lead via a 0.22 microfarad capacitor. And well, we see the same. So, uh, it doesn't have much advantage, that second stage. That's very important to know. Uh, take the rod out and in, in this situation, we go of course to other frequencies. And again, in this case, you can set the duty cycle by changing this 47k potentiometer. Let me show it. So duty cycle changes substantially. Here it stops like I told earlier. Anyway, so the same situation, but uh, the interesting thing is here that I found that when I turn this 1k5 potentiometer, we have a kind of effect on the waveform. Even when that BD139 is not connected to the positive lead, so it cannot amplify. I think it acts as a kind of, say, buffer or whatever, damping, etc. etc. That's all possible. So you see what happens when I change turn that 1k5 potentiometer up. So this shows in a certain way that it is a buffer. Kind of buffer. 
Beautiful waveform, by the way. Beautiful square wave. That's what I mean. So here we see the effects of turning the potentiometer of 1k5 in the emitter lead of the BD139. So I think it acts as a kind of damping circuit. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't want to make this video too long. When you are interested, uh, you can make this circuit in a very easy way. Uh, perhaps it also will work on higher frequencies, and then I mean higher than 250 kilo cycles. And well, when you do all these experiments, perhaps forget this part of the circuit. Take the signal out, out of the amplifier here, the BC-547B. And then, well, study it. The bias is set here with that 47K potentiometer. The oscillator is in another video on my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. And of course, do your own experiments.